this, mo this morning I'd like to share with you uh, insights from the research contained in this new book, Lost America's Antiquities, A Hidden History. This book is a critical review on how history has been handed down to our day. It has been said that history is to a nation what memory is to man, and that that is why no one has influenced the course of human history almost uh, any greater than historians. In our research, we learned how these early men of science and government, John Wesley Powell and Lewis Henry Morgan, came to realize that they could address many political and social issues facing them in the 1800s, and how their views into the origin and evolution of man and the origin of the ancient mound building cultures could be used in altering the course of human history. Several years ago, while producing the documentary, The Lost Civilizations of North America, I accompanied our research and production team through the Ohio and Mississippi River Valleys as we visited sites of the ancient mound building cultures. It was a true adventure of discovery for notwithstanding our prior research, we were surprised to still find an abundance of artifacts, burial mounds, and massive earthwork structures, artifacts giving evidence of a more highly advanced civilization than we have been led to believe. Um, as we were asking some of the very same questions that you're probably asking yourself here, the why, how, and the who questions, uh, if there were advanced civilizations here in North America, why don't we know more about them? Why haven't they been more celebrated? And if the knowledge of these ancient civilizations were silenced, who silenced them? And uh, how did that all come about? So in answering some of these questions, I'm going to share with you some uh, clips from our documentary, The Lost Civilizations of North America. And please excuse this first one. It's a very opening clip of uh, the documentary and it has in 1991 credits on it. while serving as the director of the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History historian Roger Kennedy was shocked to learn for the first time that massive ancient city remains existed in North America very very few of us were conscious of the immensity of a place like Monk's Mound at Cahokia, opposite St. Louis, which is bigger in its footprint than the Great Pyramid at Giza. We didn't know that. Most Americans have no idea that ancient cities with advanced architectures once dotted the ancient North American landscape. Director Kennedy has since coined a name for such places. What I call hidden cities. I use the term because these were very big places. There were more people, we now know, in Cahokia, across from St. Louis, than there were in London or Rome. There were major population centers in what are now Nashville and Cincinnati and Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Why is it that top historians didn't know about such things? How is it that this knowledge was kept from the modern public as well? That people are unaware of Hopewell and Cahokia as world-class achievements, uh, of course UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Not only did Kennedy as a historian at the Smithsonian not know about them. At least one president of the Society for American Archaeology had never been to Cahokia, even by the time he retired at the age of 70. I'm actually one of the people who didn't know all that much about uh, the Hopewell civilization, and in fact, I grew up in the Midwest. I'm from Michigan. There were tens of thousands of architectural consequences that are now hidden behind our junk and our architectural achievements. Once I started talking about it, I found lots of other Native people who had no idea that these sites existed and were there and what they were all about and the history of them. Um, that to me in and of itself is amazing that um, that level of 
just silence around this. We now know more about this silence. We know of an advanced ancient civilization that inhabited North America, lost to our modern memories because of 19th century political and scientific agendas. So is there more that we can learn about these ancient people and civilizations? Even though much of the artifacts were once here is now lost to us, there are still ruins and artifacts that give evidence of very large civilizations that existed here in North America. One ancient city that we visited is found across the river from St. Louis. The name given to this ancient city is Keokia, which is believed to rival any city of the world of its day. In its central square stands this giant earthen mound called Monk's Mound, which is bigger in its footprint than the Great Pyramid of Giza. Many of the earliest settlers and explorers believed in a lost race because they didn't believe that the American Indians, as viewed as a savage culture, would be capable of the sustained effort needed to quarry tons of earth. This uh, Miami Bird Mound is 68 feet high. It contains, uh, it's over uh, 852 feet in circumference. Contains over 311,000 cubic feet of soil, which consists of about 20,000 wagon loads of dirt. And this wasn't all. There are over 500 mounds and over 100 giant earthwork enclosures found in Ross County, Ohio alone. The date of the people who built this mound, as shown on this plaque, is from 1000 BC to 400 AD which is a very interesting correlation to the Book of Mormon timeline. Now this is a map depicting the ancient archaeological sites found in the state of Ohio as shown in, in 1914. And so these people were very well aware of these ancient monuments. Now one of the mound sites that our production and film crew visited is called Mound City National Park. And it's just depicted on the, the far corner. The other one is that of Monk's Mound. As our bus pulled up to this park, the morning mist was just starting to rise off the fields of mounds that dotted the landscape. As we walked among these mounds, we wondered with uh, great awe as to the energy expended in building these uh, uh, giant mounds. And as we walked among them, we were wondering what would motivate uh, the building of such massive iconic structures as these? And if there was more that we should learn from these ancient cultures. We did, however, discover that there were many others who were asking some similar questions to what we were asking, including no less an authority than Dr. Roger Kennedy, former director of the Smithsonian American History Museum. In his landmark book, Hidden Cities, in which he published in 1994, Dr. Kennedy recounts the startling personal events that led to its writing. Uh, he said, inspired by what he had found in exploring subterranean caves found in the state of Indiana, as he realized from the artifacts found that others had walked those paths through those caves centuries earlier. Now, uh, Dr. Roger Kennedy went on to say in his book, few realize that some of the most complex structures of ancient archaeology were built in North America, home of some of the most highly advanced and well-organized civilizations in the world. In producing the Lost Civilization documentary, we set out to interview the foremost scholars that we could find who had studied these ancient cultures and history, and in so doing, this understanding of this daunting history emerged. In our interviews and research, we came to realize that this is indeed a larger history than just the loss of America's antiquities, which is huge, or even the exploration of the geography of the Book of Mormon in North America, or the loss of the Indians' true history. This is a story of how and why our recovery of this knowledge 
has been hampered, hidden, and manipulated, and how these provocations were motivated by a myriad of issues facing these early men in science in the 1800s, and how it has had a huge effect on society.